Imagine you bought an old car for $10,000 and you needed an insurance policy in case the car was stolen or damaged. The insurance companies would offer different rates depending on factors such as your driving record, level of coverage, and size of the deductible. But all the insurance companies would agree on one thing. None of them will insure you for more than the value of the car. This is because companies understand something called moral hazard. If you bought a car for $10,000 and could insure it for $20,000, you would have an incentive to set the car on fire, or at least leave it in a bad neighborhood with the engine running. Companies understand that would be a recipe for losing money. I'm Nikki Kurakawa with the Independent Women's Forum. As part of the Center for Freedom and Prosperity's Economics 101 series, I'm here to explain moral hazard and how government policies sometimes encourage foolish behavior. Let's use an example from the financial crisis. You may have wondered why so many financial institutions were so careless about lending money to people with sketchy credit histories to buy overpriced houses. In a genuine free market, investors are reluctant to lend money when there's a high probability that they won't get paid back. So what happened in recent years to convince bankers to make silly loans? This is where we see the impact of government policy, particularly the pernicious role of moral hazard caused by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, two government-created entities. The politicians required these two government-sponsored enterprises to buy packages of dodgy loans, known as mortgage-backed securities, in order to satisfy so-called affordable lending requirements. This policy may have been motivated by a noble idea of boosting home ownership, but politicians were so anxious to buy votes that they didn't bother to think about the risks of moral hazard. Simply stated, banks and other financial institutions quickly realized that they could make loans to just about anybody, collect a fee, and then package all such loans together and transfer the risk of default to Fannie and Freddie, i.e. taxpayers like you and me. This moral hazard meant that lenders could relax their standards, and they did. There are other moral hazard issues to consider, including what happens when home buyers don't have to put up a down payment because of government subsidies. That means they have no skin in the game and don't suffer losses if they walk away from their mortgage. This increases the risk of default. Another example is too big to fail in the financial sector. If investors think that the government will bail out big institutions, there is less incentive to engage in good oversight. This creates the risk of new versions of Fannie and Freddie, ticking time bombs that will explode, leaving taxpayers to pay for the damage. The beauty of the free market is that it gives people the chance to win big. But there's an old saying that capitalism without bankruptcy is like religion without hell. Risk taking generally is a good thing and it's often a sign of a dynamic economy but subsidized risk creates a moral hazard. This is bad for taxpayers and bad for the economy. I'm Nikki Kurakawa. Thank you again for watching this Center for Freedom and Prosperity Economics 101 video. Please spread the word.